In this video we finally conclude our three-part fence extravaganza and if you haven't already seen parts one and two please do check them out. But let's get this week started where we left off. Now with the adhesive set overnight our 3.3 meter or 11 foot fence is as strong as it'll ever be and when unclamped we can begin the paint prep by giving everything a good sanding to remove any sharp edges, glue squeeze or pencil marks. Uh, so one of the things I like to do when you've got anything where there's going to be, uh, not ground contact exactly, but these, the, the base of these pillars, base of these posts is go, are going to be on a low brick wall. So there's the potential for water to sit there. Um, and one of the things I like to do is to put some kind of treatment on the, on the base of it. It's going to be painted anyway, but I use this stuff. Um, it's a wood hardener. It's intended for the prevention of, of wet rot um, so if you're repairing an old door or a window frame, you chop out the, the rotten wood, you put some of this on what's left, and then you can fill it in the usual way, but actually just using it as a treatment. But just on the end grain here, it soaks right in, and dries in about an hour, and it forms a hard sort of protective film that's soaked into the ends of the timber. It's just another little bit of belt and braces. Doesn't do any harm. But it will help prevent any water ingress um, at the bottom of the posts. Once our wood hardener has had a chance to dry, we can press on with the primer undercoat, working methodically along the fence sections using both a brush and a roller to make sure that everything is covered, and finishing with the tops of the posts before leaving it to dry. So one of the things that a, a decent coat of uh, primer and undercoat does is it gives it a, a flat, sort of even surface, and it gives you the opportunity to look for all the, all the blemishes, because there's always going to be a few. It's not too bad on this one actually, there's a little one here, and there's a you know, little bit where there's a knot, and we can just fill those. It's it's not a not a big deal. The same on the on the back side as well. There are just little bits because we bought plain timber already. Little areas where the planer quite hasn't caught, and little knots. Again, we we just put a little dab of filler on those. It's it's tempting to ignore them. It's tempting to leave them and uh, just paint over them, saying that's you know it's on the back of the fence. But the truth is, the back of the fence is the part that's going to face the house. So the the client, the homeowner, is going to be looking out of the window at that back side. So it's actually quite important to get everything uh, to get everything finished nicely. Using a two-pack resin, we cover all the blemishes, working the filler well into the surface before smoothing it out as much as possible. Then gently sanding it back once set before applying another coat of primer undercoat over the areas that we've just treated. So now we've got my favourite part of the job, the painting. Uh, not actually my favourite. Um, I'm, I'm trying something new here. Um, I don't use, a, I'm sorry, I've used water-based paints for the last 12 or so years, but I've never found a particularly good water-based black. Um, not that wasn't it didn't have to be a special order. Uh, I'm trying this one, it's a Johnson's paint, and we'll see how it goes. Um, so I think I'm going to be fast forwarding this one so you don't get too bored. When you're painting something this size with so many joins, you need to work methodically to make sure that nothing gets missed. And remembering, of course, that you need to do both sides. Now this whole... Um, Tipping it forwards so it's on one edge thing. I sort of taught myself this uh, as a way of being able to paint both sides of a, you know, a cabinet or a wardrobe carcass in one go. Um, then you've only got one lot of drying time to deal with. So otherwise, if you have to both paint both sides and you've got drying time for each, uh, it's a slow old job. So. Uh, they're just tipping it forwards on one edge 
and then when it comes to it you just tip it back to do the base and then do the top works pretty well uh, if only it was that fast in real life you might be wondering why I'm applying this with a brush not a roller um, two reasons for that really first of all it's a gloss paint and it says apply with brush on the tin um, the other thing is while I don't mind the slight sort of bobbliness on the surface of the paint uh, when you've got an eggshell finish I really don't like it with a with a roller and with a quick drying finish like this um, there generally isn't enough time to sort of blend those out with a brush so uh, with this if I'm going to have any sort of texture in the final finish I'd like it to be brush strokes rather than uh, roller roller rash but that is just a personal preference of course and finally the last post okay so there we go uh, there's at least two three hours before I can get a second coat on that, it'll be touch dry within an hour or so. Uh, but as always, you know, painting, there's nothing you can do but paint and wait. In fact, the paint was still very soft four hours later, so I left it overnight before applying a second coat. And as this time lapse shows, it was just as much fun as the first coat. I don't do much work at weekends, but I'm not beyond popping into the workshop to touch up the base of the posts, as it doesn't take too long. So I've got a couple of lengths of wood uh, on top of the roof rack there, just to take out some other sort of springiness, because obviously the fence is only joined by dominoes in the centre, and uh, you don't want to put undue stresses on the, on those joins. Normally, if I think bigger. Uh, I'd get it. I'd get a, somebody with a bigger van in to do it, but for one little piece like this, it's not worth it. We'll just stick it on the roof and, and lash it down. What a lovely, bright, clear day. A bit chilly, but uh, everything's ready to go. So let's crack on, eh? So here we are. We're on site in uh, in a West London uh, location. Uh, perfect client. Give me a cup of coffee already. And the first job, first order of the day, will be to obviously get rid of this old uh, this old fence. It's just sort of screwed in. Uh, into little brackets, so uh, fingers crossed they'll come out without too much of a fight, but uh, I've said that before. Whenever you've got some old screws that have been painted over multiple times, it's always worth having to dig around with a, an awl or something, just to try and release as much of the paint as you can. Give yourself a fighting chance to get the screws out without gnarling the heads. A little bit of digging allows most of the screws to be loosened by hand, although some do need a bit of extra persuasion from the training hammer. So there's one stubborn screw that just doesn't want to play, so what we'll do, we'll just pull the others out, so we can't just force that one. If it needs to be, we'll just have to cut it off. Drill driver makes short work of the loosened screws. Whereas the time honoured approach of a hammer and chisel deals nicely with the one remaining stubborn screw. Always worth having a couple of older, cheaper chisels knocking around just to uh, do, the, do the uncomfortable, dirty work. With all the screws removed, the old fence can simply be lifted out and the top of the wall cleaned up. Before bringing in our new fence and centering it up between the brick piers. You know, doesn't matter how many times you do this, there's always a sort of sense of relief when it actually fits in the space 
<laughs> you're supposed to. <laughs> with the fence in position, we can simply fix it in place with screws and use most of the original brackets. Yeah, so the brackets just missing the post here because mine are uh, equidistant and the uh, original ones weren't. In the end, I opt for the easy fix, simply adding another bracket to the wall and fixing the fence to this. And with all the real work done, it's time for a quick tidy up and then a final touch up of the paintwork. Not forgetting to tone down the shiny new bracket. And that's it for this week. Thank you uh, so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Hope you've liked it. Um, if you have liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it freely. And don't forget, you can always subscribe. Then you'll be notified whenever I post something new. But for this week, the shortest installation you'll ever see me do. Thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully see you next time. Take care.